Elementor has released some new updates to the V4 editor. We're going to have a look at those, but what I really want to do is answer a couple questions like, is this ready? Is it ready to actually start making live websites and what else is needed? All right, let's check out these updates. The first update and the one I was mostly looking forward to was size variables. So in the last update, we got a first look at variables, but it was only in our typography and background colors. But now we have it in all of our sizing values. For example, we could put variables in our margins, our paddings, and basically anywhere. And the way this will work, let's say I'm going to go to this text. Let me go over here to size. And I am going to create a new variable for max width because this text is just way too big. I'm going to click on the variables and you can see I already have a few of them. Max width large, medium, and small. Now I'm going to create an extra small. So let me click on plus. I'm going to put max width and I'm going to put extra small. And for my value, I'm going to put 350 pixels. Now I'm just going fast. I would always convert this to rem. We'll create it. And now this is set right here. We didn't have to manually put in 350 pixels, but this is where we can start to see how useful this is going to be. Like maybe the extra small is too small. We could go ahead and try out our different sizes. And let's say we want to fine tune it a little bit. Maybe the medium is just too small. Instead of creating a new variable, we'll just go ahead and update this one. I'll make this one 750 pixels. And now we manage everything in our variables right here because variables are essentially a global inside of CSS. It makes editing just so much easier. And all of this is cool, but there's still one thing missing inside of the variables that I feel is just critical. It's an absolute must have. That's the ability to add clamps into our variables because right now all we could do is just the regular inputs, you know, pixel, rem, m, and so on. We don't have the option to add clamps and we need to have that because things like typography, when we're creating a variable for our font size, we need to be able to put in our clamps. We have to for our fluid designs. Now, if we were to go here to typography for our font size, not the variable, you can see that we do have the option here. They updated the icon, but we could put in our clamp just like this. So we need to be able to do this, but inside of a variable. And it's not just for font sizes. We need this for things like our gaps, our different spacing, things like even border radiuses. So hopefully we see that in the next update. But now let's take a look at one of the new updates, which is advancements to the class manager. And there's one thing that I found really, really useful is really dope. I'm glad they added it. First, let me finish styling up this text old school way. We're going to go old school Elementor and just add in all of our stuff one by one. I'm going to style up the fonts. Let me go to font weight. Okay. I'll even go ahead and put in a text color now. I would actually create my variables. Let me see, do I have, yeah, I do got a variable. Let's do that. Here's the next big update. I styled it basically at the ID level, like we usually do in Elementor, it's not in a class. Let's say we want to turn this to a class, like a large text. We could go over here to the three dots, and now we got this option, convert to global class, and this is going to save us tons of time. I could just go ahead and style it up like normal, and then give it a name. I'm going to call this one text large and there we go this new update is going to make it really easy and fast to create our classes i really dig this the next update to the class manager is going to be back over here let me save and continue we're going to have this filter the filter is going to show us the classes that are unused it's going to show us ones that are empty like if we got a class and there's just no styling in it and then what's being used on this page it's going to make it easy to manage things because I could see later when more Elementor users are adopting the style or learning how to build with this new way, this new editor, that many are just going to start to get clutter with classes. It's inevitable. It's part of the journey. And having this filter is going to help us to clean up that clutter. So this is a good update. Now, the next updates are going to be down at the bottom. It's going to be under effects. And we're going to have the transform and transitions. So I'm going to keep this one really simple so you could get just a really good understanding of what this does. First off, the transition. And 
what the transition is, is when we're doing something like on hover, you can see like it's more smooth. If I were to put this at zero milliseconds, that means there is no transition. It's just instantaneous. And then if I were to change this, let's say two seconds, the S is seconds, the MS is milliseconds. And then this formula icon is for writing out your calc formulas. But let's say right here, I'm going to change this back to second. I'll put it at two. That means it's going to be a lot slower. It'll take two seconds for the transition to complete. And before I used to have to write CSS for all of this. So this is pretty good. It's going to be easy. I think a lot of people are going to find a lot of use in it, but the transform is the next update. First off, we click on this icon here, the settings, and it's going to show you the base. We're not going to touch it right now. This is basically the starting point of the element. Let's say we want to add an effect where things change on hover. Well, we go over here, click on the three dots to change our state to hover. We got the option to for hover, focus and active. Let's go back over to our transform. And let's say I wanted to rotate. I'm going to have it just rotate just a little bit. Now on hover, you can see it rotates. And I do have the background here already changing on hover. So that's how this is being used. I mean, we could use multiple effects as well. Let's say I want to skew this. Let's go ahead and just do something weird. I don't know what's going to happen. It just looks like that. You know, for me, I like to keep this as simple as possible when I'm using these type of transformations. You got to really know what you're doing because it is really easy to mess up a design. So please use this lightly. And well, that brings us to the end of the updates. That is it. And now to answer the question, is this ready to use on live websites? And I don't think it is not yet. There are just things that are way too important that are missing that make it so I cannot, I would not want to use this on a live website because it's just too risky. The variables, they need to be completed. We got to be able to add clamps. The last thing I want to do is invest a lot of time creating a framework where I can't use clamps in fluid CSS and then have to redo all of it over again and just waste time. Another thing as well are grids. We need to get container grids. Those are going to be way more important than having transforms and transitions, in my opinion. These are the fundamentals and I would like to see those hopefully roll out next and not take too long. Yeah, I would hold off on using this on a live site right now. And I know usually when it comes to something in beta or especially something in alpha, you never are supposed to use it live. And I believe in that, but I would bend the rules a little bit in Elementor's case, because if we look at their track record, like what they did with the containers, it took two years to roll those out. It was in beta for two years. And for a year of those two years, it, it was good enough to use on live websites. And I did use it on live websites because I already knew I, I didn't want to have to rebuild sites down the line. I'll keep you posted though. And I'll let you know when I feel like this is ready for at least landing pages in simple websites. And real quick, just a heads up, at the end of this month, I'm going to be running a live workshop on using CSS frameworks in the new Elementor V4 editor. We're going to be making this super simple, creating our frameworks. And if you are new to the whole class-based styling approach, with this new editor, this is going to make everything so simple. We're going to simplify everything, make it really easy to understand, and then have repeatable using blueprints. So if you do want to be part of the workshop, then join the community. There are links inside the description. I do have more videos coming out on the V4 editor as they are progressing. I just hope that they progress more quickly. And I would like to hear your opinions. What do you think about this? What would you like to see? Do you feel like it is ready? Can you see yourself using the editor yet? Even building simple landing pages. I would love to hear your thoughts inside of the comments. That's it for this video. And if you would like to learn more about the V4 editor, definitely check out this video showing some of the other updates that we've already covered in the past. Thank you for watching.